Hi all, I am Shah and I have Kishan with me. Hi everyone. Welcome to Free Float and uh, we have a slightly different topic today uh, outside of uh, you know your regular factors and uh, you know trend following and finance and whatnot. Um, I let Kishan uh, dive into this uh, and then you know maybe I will uh, as usual play the devil's advocate on this. All right, Kishan, uh, take it sure. away. All right, yeah. So, so, so Sham, you know, um, we love patterns, right? Like, you know, uh, so, so one of the patterns, you know, that I, you know, like is, uh, uh, you know, we, uh, we'd, we'd like to rate companies, right? And one of the things we rate companies is that, you know, uh, if they're two directors of, with the same last name, for example, you know, uh, it usually means it's a family-run company, right. you know? And family-run companies, I mean, no offense to anyone, but, you know, the the perception that this might be wrong or this might be right, I have no, you know, uh, basis to say anything, you know, uh, on this, but the the perception is that they are, the, the prim- I mean, they don't command a premium as much as, you know, um, you know, ones which are, which are professionally run. So you, so you mark those companies down, you know, like, you know, in, in terms of rating. So I'm always, you know, interested in finding these, uh, uh, alternative or you know this this idiosyncrasy uh, you know um, factors so to you know say. you know you know what last name that I hate the most in uh, company ownership the president of India it's like yeah. every single you know is, uh, PSC, is, you know is owned by the president of India so he shows up there in the shareholding pattern so if I see that I just run away from it <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you avoid uh, PSU is like the plague. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, so, so I thought you know we'll you know do get some interesting research out there, you know. And this is you know, I mean, while this might seem like irrelevant or you know might not really impact in this perform, the idea is that you know, um, investing, <laughs> I mean, has a lot of behavioral and human you know uh, aspects to it. And you know whether you're running a company or whether you're managing money, uh, those aspects affect you know. Uh, you know how you know how you perform. You know because they're both very uh, uh, running a company or being part of a company is an emotionally. You know, you know, it takes an emotional toll when things are not right and stuff. So you know, um, I've read this post uh, like earlier this week on on sexual harassment uh, on um, in this company. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, and generally, and this post is by Clement on investing. Uh, do you read it? Uh, no, I, I don't. I don't think okay. I. So, so it's another Substack newsletter, you know. And basically, this research by this by this Canadian company, you know, showed, and they went through all the Glassdoor and you know, uh, Indeed.com reviews, you know, of you know the employer, and they found where there's a where there's a systemic problem, you know, uh, of the of say sexual harassment or you know accusement of of cover-ups, there's always, you know, those companies tend to perform poorly in terms of return on equity or, or return on assets. Uh, then the company which, you know, uh, then the average company, like in, in the same industry. So, you know, it, it shows you that, uh, uh, I mean, and it makes sense, right? So in the, in the company, in an, in, an, in an environment like that, um, your, your productivity will be much lower, you know, people will be less satisfied to, you know, uh, with their jobs. And generally, the environment would not be very conducive for people to produce, you know, good work or, or great work, you know. Uh, and that makes, I mean, th- that makes logical sense. So, you know, so, uh, I mean, and that got me thinking, and I remembered, you know, reading a couple of years ago. For example, fund managers who are going through a divorce tend to outperform, uh, tend, tend to underperform significantly uh, than their peers, you know. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean, by a wide margin, uh, and and up to two to four years. Even that, you know, makes sense, right? I mean, in the sense that you know, if you're going through a very emotionally challenging time personally, and if you're managing funds, you know, uh, you tend to, you know, make, uh, you tend to, you know, ignore what's happening in the market and stuff. Uh, then, was there any? Did well, you come across any uh, studies where uh, you know uh, they try to link? Uh, 
the number of kids you have uh, versus you know oh do, uh, are you a new father and your uh, fund performance did they ever yeah, do that so oh, they did so, okay. yeah yeah so 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 when so when someone gets newly married yeah. that's even worse than uh, <laughs> the when they get divorced <laughs> so in so in the year one year before they get married two years after they get married the performance drops significantly i mean even more than when they getting divorced but that's a different reason uh, the, the reason for that is uh, people stop taking um, more i mean uh, more risk they take fewer trades and they you know try to hug the index you know because they're distracted for <laughs> for happier reasons <laughs> and uh, and more funny was you know when i was doing this research i found um, uh, so the same studies found that that single men you know people who are not even married uh, have more volatile returns you know than uh, than ones who are married like you know after a few years yeah, and that can uh, directly you know correlated to the number of hangovers they've had <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i mean yeah so you know i mean um, it makes sense right in the sense that you know uh and 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 the justification in the study was that you know like one of the reasons that they think is because you know a guy might uh, be trying to improve his prospects in marriage uh you know uh, so so you know he wants to look good you know out for the market and you know earn a big bonus check and stuff like that so you know um so those managers tend to um like have uh, more volatile returns <laughs> which is which is quite funny and, and and also it makes intuitive sense and uh, i think it's it, this is very relevant to india because you know in in india you have a lot more active management uh, you know uh, both at the institutional level and at the you know at the boutique level and you know even at even at our le- level and even individually like you know if uh, if it's like somebody's thinking of managing money or you know trading or like in, like investing the investing by themselves uh these things matter like you know knowing these limitations that you know if you're going through personally like a hard time then maybe you should not be trading you know as much as you used to i mean you, you know because uh it might it, it might take a toll on you you know i mean like you, i mean your financial portfolio will take a toll as well right. you know see but, but here's the thing though right um so um this is this these studies it kind of reminds me of um, uh, this uh, research that showed that if you live below a power line then you got cancer right yeah so the problem was that you know uh, of that of sample size so not many people live below power lines and uh, so the you know so if you study only that subset of people uh then you will find that you know uh, the number of uh, people with cancer uh, you know in in that subset of a population is vastly higher than uh, what you will find in you know uh, if you look at the whole general population so uh, so this this sort of logic right i mean this sort of studies is kind of problematic because if you look at the fact that you know uh, there are like i don't know uh, thousands of cfas in the us right and out of that very few actually manage funds most of them are in research and you know and that kind of stuff so uh, if you look at hedge fund managers they may be like you know maybe a thousand of them so uh, you know in in the us 50% of people get divorced so uh, out of that thousand only maybe 500 people uh, you know are actually divorced says right at some point yeah. in their life they would have divorced and and an even fewer subset will be actually undergoing a divorce right so now you have a very very small subset and out of that there's no way to uh, do a counterfactual study like you can't say all things being equal let's see what happens so for that you need to find another manager who is running the exact same strategy and not yeah. getting divorced right and yeah. then spare it so you can't you just can't set up a decent experimental rig you know to uh, to, yeah, to yeah. definitively say that you know this uh, this this matters um and i i feel yes you know these things uh, it makes sense from an intuitive level because investing is a very uh, emotionally i mean uh, you need to invest a lot of your emotions to not being emotional while investing so uh, so that is difficult 
and uh, I get that, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if the numbers of these studies actually uh, make sense. Yeah. So uh, I mean, uh, I mean, so the thing is that you know, uh, you know, a, a lot of what we do, you know, is based on us uh, testing different theories, you know, and then and then you know those theories. Uh, if you have a lot of data and a lot of you know. Um, uh, and you know, and if we can actually test it out even in a live, you know, environment, uh, it it gives us confidence, uh, right. you know, to to a great extent. And obviously, I'm not, you know, the thing is, uh, you must know, I mean, you know, what these things are, and 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 and, and the limitation of this research. So you know, one is sample size, obviously. S second thing is that you know, uh, the median manager, I mean, you know, might have you know done well because you know of some of some. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I, I mean, the underperformance might be due to, due to, you know, something else not related to those. But at an average, I think, you know, it does tell you that, you know, there is an underperformance, you know, and 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 this is not versus the market, you know, this is versus your peers. So you know, uh, so so and and also what the study found is that you know when someone's going through a divorce. Uh, or you know, uh, when they're married, they also try to hug the in index uh, or the style much more. So you know, they have they're less active bets that they're making. You know, uh, and uh, that also is a pretty much it, it's pretty clear in, 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 in strategy. So there's a there's a it's not a there's some basis you know on the test. I mean you know, and uh, the last thing you know uh, I think and you know put it up also was that uh, women beat men when it comes to trading. <laughs> that, you know, because they make few. I mean, men now men have this overconfidence bias. Absolutely, I I, I get that. I get yeah. that. Um, yeah. You know, I I see you know some of the investment choices that my uh, wife makes, and I'm like, uh, you know, this is too conservative. You know, this will never make you money. But it it's kind of like a tortoise in a hair kind of a thing. So I'm like, oh, momentum, momentum. You know, let's go, and uh, she'll go invest in some index fund, and uh, you know, <laughs> time. You know, you know, after all this, uh, you know, gray hair and everything, uh, I probably gain a, you know a few thousand more than her, and she'll be like totally chill. So. <laughs> Yeah, I get that. I mean, yeah. So, so you know, I mean, so uh, this is something that I've seen even like before, like some study, like I read like a few years ago, which said women are far better investment managers than men. You know, because they don't have the same um, number of overconfidence. They don't over trade as much. So all those things, you know, end up affecting your performance. Like you know, your wife beats you probably in the index fund every year or two without you know, and I, I, I and I and I don't think she's anywhere close to being gray. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot to be said about uh, tension-free investing. You know, like uh, how 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 many brain cycles do you want to spend every day thinking about your investments? I think that's a big factor for most people because they have other shit to do. You know, like um, uh, their regular jobs. Uh, you know, their kids, uh, their vacation, and uh, you know, just living their life. And uh, you know, if you um, if you set them up with an investment strategy that involves a lot of active decisions uh, day in and day out, uh, I think it's counterproductive because at some point they just uh, get tired and you know uh, overcome by fatigue and they're just like chuck it. It's not going to work for me. Yeah, I think yeah, I think you know uh, that's very true. That you know most people who who uh, who do things like this, you know, in um, who invest or trade. You know, by themselves as a hobby, you know, are, are doing it. You know, I mean, I mean, how to put it? You know, uh, out of curiosity, uh, you know, with the idea of you know getting rich, or you know, they're just bored. You know, uh, you know, so it's, it's one of those two, two. In a large sample, there'll be obviously a few winners who you know who will get it right. But um, you know, remember the study which found that. Uh, people who start trading, you know, lose their lose the entire account within a year, like yep. a large, like ninety nine percent. Uh, because I think over if you trade enough, I think luck just catches up with you. I mean, the probabilities just catch up. And uh, yeah, I think you know, it's not it's it's not something that you know people should do by themselves. 
Sure. Yeah, I think the worst thing is, uh, you know, fooled by randomness, right? Uh, I think I posted this uh, way back. So, supposing you have a strategy uh, that has, uh, you know, that in one year will double your, uh, you know, uh, double your uh, capital, right? Yeah. Um, so, you go and you don't know, uh, you know, in which of those five years it will double your capital and which of those four years, you, you know, it's, you're going to go bust. So, on year one, you know, you make 100%. And, and then, you know, from a psychological point of view, you will refuse to calculate the odds of you going bust subsequently yeah. because you're running a high risk strategy. And, you, you know, and even though you may be, you may have a math PhD which says that, you know, you should calculate those odds and, you know, stay away from the market, you will not do that. You will label yourself as a genius who has come up with some awesome stuff and you want to do it full time. And, uh, you know, and uh, you, subsequently you will go bust. Um, so it's very difficult to, uh, you know, kind of, um, ex uh, you know, uh, uh, admit that you've just been lucky, right? Yeah. You just got lucky. And, and that, you know, that luck is uh, not going to, uh, you know, uh, result in um, great uh, returns on capital moving forward. So just take your winnings from the casino and go home. And nobody does that. Yeah, I mean, and and the problem is that this is every day, you know. I mean, you know, every day, yeah, something's happening or something's moving and stuff. So, you know, unless you have a strategy or you know, like a like a good plan, uh, um, that never happens. Yeah, and recently, um, I think you know, uh, I, I I mentioned this on on uh, Twitter. Um, so Wall Street ran a uh, thing saying, um, you know, low volatility strategies have underperformed the market. Uh, it didn't really uh, help during the current coronavirus yeah. uh, thing. So what what's the point of this? So my, you know, I was kind of triggered by it, right? Uh, because these things are uh, are not some magic, uh, you know. Uh, formula that uh, you know magically adapts itself to the uh, you know to the market and 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 you know result in great returns so they all operate under a specific set of uh, preconditions right uh, yeah. you know, and even if you just do uh, a simple moving average strategy uh, you have to figure out you know what is the um, time frame you're going to hold uh, that investment and uh, you need, and uh, you know, when you adjust your look back periods, you will realize that strategies that miss your, you know, your 5% uh, or 10% drawdowns are great at, uh, you know, uh, helping you avoid the 50% drawdowns. But the strategies that, you know, you design to catch all these 5% drawdowns, you know, will not help you. Um, you know, protect yourself from the 50% drawdown. It's just the speed at which your strategy moves, right? Because a 50% drawdown can occur in multiples of, you know, 5% drawdowns. So, you, you know, you might skip the first five, but then you'll re-enter and then you'll experience the next 10 and so on and so forth. So, um, so it's very rarely that you will find a single strategy that can do both. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so these uh, kind of you know low volatility strategies are great at missing, you know, the, those small hiccups that five to ten percent drawdowns. You know, you will sail through it because uh, you know that, that's what the strategy is. Uh, you know, uh, is designed to do. Uh, but if you are faced with like a 2008 or a COVID type drawdown, then you know, it's it's just not meant to you know meant to help you in that. For that, you need something else. Yeah, which is diversification. I mean, at a different source. You know, yeah. The, and, you know, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So think, you know, it is uh, you know is kind of idiotic because it's it's doing what it's designed to do. Let it be, right? It's it's an algo at the end of the day. So uh, and it's chugging along. And and the worst thing is, uh, you know, the guys who are um, you know complaining about this. Are probably going to bail now, and you know, and this top this type of steep drawdown may not occur in the future. So, and you know, and uh, they will get hit by all this five and ten percent drawdowns because they switched uh, from here. So, it's it's just that you know, understanding why you invested in something, uh, you know, and 
knowing when it will work and when it will not work i think it's the number one thing you know <clears throat> what this yeah yeah all right but so i think you know this week is this next week um, we've got something interesting to talk about you know uh, maybe factor rotation yep um so we uh, let's let's do factor rotation uh you know next week um see how you know once again it's the same thing right it's not designed to catch every single bump in the road so uh, we'll 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 highlight this in next week yeah all right all right thank you everyone uh, this is a very short free float for this week we will uh, meet again next weekend